Hello all, Creeperoni here. What you'll hear in this video are submissions to my Halloween Creepypasta contest. You can show your support for the stories you like most by commenting below, and your feedback will help me decide a winner on October 28, 2016. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy what these talented writers have to offer. I'm a 23-year-old man who's got a friend that's having an issue. Her name is Rebecca, and she's a 22-year-old college student. Rebecca is a sweetheart and is quite attractive, but don't tell her I said so. She lives by herself on the ground floor of a one-bedroom apartment. She's having me spend a few nights on her couch because of what happened the other night. You see, she got home from school, and after studying for a few hours, she decided to get some sleep. The weather outside was so nice, she opened up her bedroom window to let some fresh air in. Around three in the morning, she woke up in terror. Somebody had cut open her screen and reached their hand in and was gently stroking her hair. She screamed and the person ran off. She called the police, but they didn't find any leads to go on. They asked her if she'd gotten a good look at the guy, but all she saw was his hand in the dark and only for a second. They told her they would send a car by for a few nights to check if anybody was lurking around. Other than that, there's nothing they can do for her. This is when she asked me if I'd spend a few nights there, you know, so she could feel safe. I am more than happy to help out a friend in need. Man, <laughs> I'm glad she doesn't know it was me. Have you ever listened to the silence? I have. It was beyond the worst mistake of my life. There is a sound just beyond the silence. All you have to do is focus. Try your best to sound out the message. After the first time you decipher the message, it will become easier and easier until you can do it almost by accident. The first time I did it, I cried, almost instantly. Not because I was frightened or because I didn't like what I heard. No, it was the exact opposite. I loved what I heard. It was the most beautiful, amazing, and empowered voice I've ever heard. Well, at least for the first couple of times. It was the most comforting voice that could ever be spoken, yet I am the only person that it speaks to. This did not please the voice nor does it please me. Please, someone help me. Being the only person this wretched voice speaks to is driving me insane. It is no longer the beautiful voice that I once knew. It is now terrifying and evil, the worst voice I've ever heard. I hear it every minute of every day, and I know what it is. It's the prayers of the dead, pleading to regain entry into our world. The first couple of times we spoke, they thought I was one of them, a new person. They figured that I was different when I told them that I had to go, I had to do something else. Why? Have you ever heard of a spirit doing something else? Have you ever heard the pain of every spirit ever crying out to you? Have you ever heard the true pain? No, you haven't. You have never once heard the pain. No cry. Not even a scream of the worst torture has ever been as bad, or as loud, or as tortured as these voices are. These voices know that I am living, and that I can hear them. They are no longer a cry forged together to create a song more beautiful than the most beautiful opera, or a choir of the most amazing voices that have ever been heard. I can now understand. Each and every one of them. I can understand all of the cries individually. I can hear all of the pleas. It does not matter what I try. I cannot stop hearing the spirits. 
I hate this. I talk to many spirits trying to ease them, but spirits are smarter. Spirits are older. They have experience. Experience that we do not have. I was talked into doing a ritual. Something never meant to be done. I learned the ritual from one of the spirits that seemed to not care about the other voices. I brought back one spirit. Only one. One that sounded familiar. One I thought I could trust. I brought back my true love, Ivy. My wife died months after our marriage. A drunk driver struck her after a late night at work. She was on her way home from the job that I asked her to take. We needed the money and we almost had enough saved up to get the house we were looking at, a house closer to her work. I begged her to buy the house so she did not need to drive as much as she did. After bringing the spirit I believed to be the love of my life back into our world, the spirit showed itself in a body. Not like those movies where people summon Satan and bring back a loved one, but with a horrifying twist, rotten skin and pure agony. No, this spirit was in a new body. Not a woman, but a man, with the voice of my wife. He stared into my horrified eyes and asked, still in my wife's beautiful voice, What? Don't you? His voice changed from my wife's to a raspy old voice, almost as if someone who had smoked every day of their life, from birth to death, and then some. Still love me? I mean you brought me back, he continued. I went from frightened to terrified, and I pleaded with the man not to kill me. Oh, why would I do that? The man asked. You listened. No one else has ever listened to us. You are not my wife. Oh, but of course I am. He began to morph and change back into my wife, but his voice stayed the same. I begged and pleaded him to get her back. I do not want you. I asked for her, and I wanted her. The man looked hurt, as if I had insulted him. But the insulted look faded slowly at first, but then as fast as a light switch being turned off, turned into a smirk. The more I looked at him, the more the day turned into darkness. I believed I could just ignore the man. I imagined him turning around and walking away. Yet when I awoke from this imagination trance, I was still there, in complete darkness, not able to see my own hands. I moved my arm and hand until I felt myself touching my own face, but I couldn't see anything. I heard one thing, one voice that made this feel all right. Well, it would have if the voice wasn't screaming please to end their existence. I plugged my ears and tried my best to drown out the screams. After about two days of this, everything stopped. No screams, no darkness, nothing. Just bright white silence. For the first week I thought this beautiful and serene, but after the first week, it started to eat away at me. About a year of silence went by before I finally figured out what happened. I wasn't dead. I hadn't gone insane and I will never forget what happened after I finally figured it out. I did not speak and I refused to eat after I woke up from the coma. Almost two decades had passed before I finally spoke. The medical staff that were designated to take care of me listened intently as I described everything, not missing anything, not a single fact, thought, or even a single feeling that I felt. I took my time, having one of the nurses writing down everything that was said, not by my choice or by the orders of anyone at the hospital. She purely wrote because she was intrigued and wished to document every word. I started out with how my wife died, then by how I learned the ritual. I spoke of the man next and how he kept his promise and never touched me. He did do one thing to me. With my own mind, he ruined me. He used the only thing I believed I could trust. He used my own voice against me. He used the love of my life's voice against me. 
He used all of those I cared for against me. He took everything from me. He gave me light. He allowed me to see and hear everything. The gift he gave to me was ripped about as fast as it was given. He gave me what I gave to him. Life. I repeat that I am not dead. I am also not alive. I am the silence. And I am in the silence. There is no escape, because there is also no entrance. We are all born in the silence, and we all die to the silence. Yet I, unlike you, will never die. You shall figure out one day what I mean if you do as I did, and listen to the silence. Once the man tortured me with my own brain, I gave up. I had finally figured out why the voices feel so much pain. I finally understand what this man has done to every one of these poor souls. I know that I said that I am not dead, and I will never die, but that is because I have always been dead. The man that killed me is the man that made me. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is God. He is the devil, the one that tortures. I gave life to the only person in the universe that can truly judge us, and God judges us harsher than any judge. He uses every person that we have ever known and everything we know about ourselves. It takes millions of years for his judgment to end, I told the nurse that is writing. I have lived through those millions of years, over and over. What do you mean? I have seen every person I love die and live through the horror that I have survived. You are telling me that you survived God's judgment. No, I did not survive. I merely have lived through them. She nodded as if she actually believed and understood me. She does not. I rose from my chair, the chair that I have called home for the past 15 years. The only person to follow me as I walked into nowhere was the nurse that wrote everything that I spoke. She grabbed my arm and asked me to take her with me. I stared at her blankly, directly into her eyes where I could see my own reflection. I was not the man I recognized from my life, before the silence. I was the man that I had freed. I had become the one person that I hated the most in the entire universe. Then almost instinctively I smiled, and agreed to take her into the silence. As she entered the silence, she asked only one question, only one thing that nagged at her. She asked me, What have you done with the man I loved? I disregarded her question, for the screams had started. She screamed and pleaded for me to put her out of her misery, but I could not listen to her, for some poor soul had just summoned his dead wife and requested that she be brought back to him. I had to meet him at least once, before the screams got any louder. What do you think the laws are? Try to keep your own religion out of the answer. A very long time ago, an old man walked up to me at the park. Now me, being a stupid small child, I said hi. I guess the big red flag was when people just seemed to walk through him. I guess at that point I should have ran, or at least screamed fire. He said only one thing to me. Find me. Follow me. Ascend with me. Then he faded away. From then on, the man and I had conversations about what the writer was thinking in each verse of the Bible. At a point, around my 17th birthday, he asked me, Boy, do you know the law of man and gods? No, sir, I don't. What are they? I answered. They're none at all, he protested. The laws are only created by the man who conjures the gods. However, there is one law, a law of nature. Much like fire, man cannot live without the gods, and the gods cannot live without the man. 
What do you mean? I asked. The man held out his hand. Take my hand. I will show you. I, still as stupid as I was years ago, took his hand and, just as I grabbed, I was jumped into a place completely black. The only thing in sight was the man. He looked like... He looked like the god you see when you think of God. I felt a deep warmth as we walked down the long corridor to a large gate. I walked through the gate, and I found myself back where I was. The man was in front of me. No gods can be without the help of man. We need each other forever and always. In my lifetime, I have seen many gods die. Great men die. For many centuries, man kill God just by forgetting or no longer needing. You are my last hope of survival now. With all my power and influence, I can't even save myself. Never forget about the gods you know are real. And with that, he faded away.